Um, I've been asked to bring some information to you to help clarify where we currently are with some of the issues with Common Core. Um, I think I want to begin by saying that it's a very uncomfortable place. Um, and I think we heard that tonight uh, from lots of people. Um, and I understand that. And it's, as Sylvia Capuyan said earlier, um, the teachers at Roosevelt School and the teachers at Laurelwood, the teachers in Salinas are side by side with the teachers in California and the teachers in many states throughout uh, the United States. It's a, a lot to take on. But then on the other hand, I, I also agree with um, Trustee Hoffman, who points out that when you look at the instructional shifts, you know the next slide? Thank you. Have your oh, you thank you. Right, the right side. Right. Okay. There you go. Um, I taught back in the day, and 30 years ago, this is kind of what it looked like, too. A lot of it was very much the same. So I don't know so much if it's an instructional shift as a pendulum, a swing of the pendulum. But it is a huge shift for many of our teachers that have only been teaching in the last 15 or so years under No Child Left Behind. Um, that was a highly scripted program. Uh, we assessed in the CSTs at what we now know to be a pretty superficial level of learning. And all those things that I went to college and learned about in the early 80s, like Bloom's taxonomy, that's what the Common Core is about. Um, but that's been lost for a while. And it is, it's, it's a, I think, Cognitively demanding is one of the words uh, Pat uses in terms of how our teachers now have to wrap their head around what instruction looks like. The common core, the standards themselves, um, there are some significant changes in what's taught at a grade level, but really the the the, the shifts. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta get that. The shifts are in how students demonstrate their learning, the depth of their learning, and of course, that's really in how teachers teach. Uh, going back here, just to let you know that these are the core instructional materials that we are using this year. They're board adopted with some supplemental materials. And at the bottom, actually, you have the mathematics adoption, and those are common core materials. TK through second grade has a common core textbook, a core math program that is on the California State Adopted List of Common Core Materials. Sixth grade also has Glencoe math um, that is CCSS Common Core. Third through fifth currently has the textbooks that's the old uh, adoption with a a supplemental um, booklet of units that definitely were not covered um, in the previous uh, standards that we have. Um, we need to take a look at the math materials we currently have, certainly for third through fifth, and see about doing a, a different type of adoption for next year. They need more. Third through fifth needs a, a lot more. One of the things in the bottom box that you see is that we have in about 95 of our teachers are using, that are in the math grant, are using a, 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 a very rigorous common uh, core math program called Engage New York. It's an open source. It's available for free uh, electronically, digitally, um, and it was developed by the state of New York. We're using it with our math grant teachers because they have access to the professional development that is really needed to implement this. And though it's um, a lot of other teachers have opted to jump on board and to use it working with grade level colleagues. And so truly for math, what we're doing with the math grant and in language arts and other ways is building teacher capacity for teacher leadership. 
And I think when we talk to professional development, I'm going to talk more about how we do need to make some major shifts in how we, um, how the opportunities we provide our teachers to grow and learn as, as professionals. Um, in language arts, we have what is on the state of California. It's still a, a current adoption, our Putin Mifflin language of literacy. And to be very, very honest, that particular adoption with the old set of standards is predominantly literature. It doesn't include a lot of nonfiction. And one of those shifts in, in language arts is that there is a balance between nonfiction and literature. So um, actually, a little over two years ago, the district bought supplemental nonfiction grade level classroom libraries that were aligned to Houghton Mifflin um, to go along with the stories. We also, for this school year, purchased book flicks for TK through third grade, and that those are digital books. And they come with paired stories, one's literature, and then one's nonfiction, and they kind of bounce off of each other. We also have asked teachers, opened up and said, please use the social studies adopted materials and the science adopted materials during language arts instruction. During language arts instruction, then you can use those materials for lessons on informational text with a focus on reading, also building background, and then during science and social studies, during those blocks of time during the day, you can, um, you can do your labs, you can do the, the larger projects, you can um, spend time on that, but really get into reading text during the language arts um, block. Um, this is a, a slide that is just off the uh, CDE, California Department of Education timeline that's showing the significant events for the language arts adoption. Uh, there's a, you can go on the website and take a look at this yourself, um, but as you can see, this is the highlighted area that Right now, the specifications are out to English language arts uh, publishers on what the books need to include. And so then they're busy getting them ready for submission. They will be providing samples uh, in May. And the vote for what materials are going to go on the Common Core State Standards of Language Arts Adoption won't occur until November of 2015. That's when the State Board of Education takes action, votes on the books that will make it onto the Common Core State Adopted Materials list. Okay, so at that point in time, we can start piloting for a full-on adoption. And I know Dr. Lucent has um, told me that last year, last time when we did the Hood and Milkland adoption, that was, it was a very long process, um, and the adoption in 2006 cost $2.5 million. Um, so this is going to be a, a very significant um, investment, and I'm hopeful that there's e-books that will help with inventory. Okay, I also want to talk a little bit about professional development, and these are just, and we've been talking about this, I've presented things, um, one of the things that the, we have done in our district for years has really been to emphasize guided language acquisition de uh, design, or GLAD, for delivering instruction. And sure enough, this has proven to be something. It is totally aligned to Common Core. All those instructional shifts in language arts um, are, are right there with GLAD. And so one of the things that we've been, we started last year was to uh, begin to work with teacher leadership and to provide training for teachers in Rally, teachers in GLAD, that can work with other teachers in collaborative um, lesson design and supporting one another through observations. And I think that now, this year, um, we've continued to do more um, professional development, but we've hit some real kinks. And one of those has been um, 
substitute teachers. We can't do the kind of professional development, um, certainly giving workshops and, and having teachers out, or even um, a, a widespread collaboration during the school day because of substitute teachers, as we're currently um, structuring it aren't there. But I absolutely um, agree that the model, uh, so the other thing that I, I was asked to mention too is what we've been doing with technology. Um, we do have the classroom devices currently. The district um, uh, supplies at the rate of four to one. Kinder and first, of course, are the iPads. Second, it's not second through third grade, that's an error, I'm sorry. Second through sixth grade have Chromebooks. But as you saw tonight, many schools, such as Los Padres, are purchasing additional to bring that ratio down. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, Los Padres is now going to be a two to one? Two to one? Yeah, that's what I thought. They're going to be a two to one. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more of that. We do have. Now, we are using technology programs in the classroom, uh, not just in the computer lab or as tutorials. Um, they are adaptive programs, they're very smart. We have Imagine Learning for first and second grade English learners, uh, System 44, which is our third grade reading intervention program. We have Accelerated Reader for second through sixth grades. And then, of course, we have the, the Book Flicks, which are the e-books. I will be bringing to, um, actually, to our, our Curriculum Council Program Improvement Team a uh, new version of Accelerated Reader that came out about two weeks ago. It's called Accelerated Reader 360, and it includes online nonfiction um, articles that can be used and read, and there's lessons around them, too, to help with the uh, shift in informational tasks. Hmm? It would be through two through six, yeah, but not for the primary. We do have the book books we have. So in a nutshell, that's some of the things that we um, have been doing, but there's a lot more to do, and we need to look at different, different ways of uh, delivering uh, support to our teachers. And I, I do think that the uh, collaborative model and looking at professional development is job embedded is something that, it's an idea this time has come.